Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. I'm TK and this is TTKK or better known as the Trusty Kitchen Knife. And we are back for another unboxing video and also a setup of this Samsung 970 Evo Plus. And I'm gonna be installing it inside my Dell Precision 5540. So it currently has a 256 GB M.2 NVMe drive. I don't remember the exact specification, but we can have a look at the drive when I open the laptop. But there's some interesting things to note about this Evo Plus. So what Samsung have done recently is this drive used to have a different controller. I can't remember now off the top of my head what that controller was. I think it was the Phoenix controller. And now it has an Elpis controller, the same controller that's found in the 980 Pro. Now the thing is, uh, obviously it's still gonna be running at a, a Gen 3 speed. That's why it's got a read speed here of 3,500 megabytes per second. But what's interesting is, since they've chained the drive, I'm not sure if you can see that there, but they've blurred out the name of the controller on the chip there. They haven't shown whether it's a Phoenix or an Elpis controller. So there's been some controversy around this because now uh, the sustained write speeds, for example, don't match what they used to on the original 970 Evo Plus. So the drive is, uh, I think a little bit cheaper as well now. It retails at around 110 pounds or 120 pounds, something like that. Uh, maybe a bit more or less, depending on you know offers and things like that. So this was actually on Amazon.de. So if you're in the UK, you can order from Amazon.de. And there was a deal on Hot UK deals which I spotted, and they had the drive for 100 euros, and it was working out to about 100 pounds delivered or something like that, including the shipping. So anyway. Um, what we're gonna do here is take the driver, put it in the laptop, and before I do that, I wanna show you on the side of the box here, there's something interesting to see. So I'm not sure if you can read that, but right here, it says one TB made in Korea. Now I believe, and it says the production date is June 2021, 27th of June 2021. So apparently what's happened is uh, some drives, sorry for the camera shake, uh, some drives before I think March or something like that. I don't know the exact date. They have the old controller and the artwork on the box is this way around and it's the older artwork. So you will know if you get one that's this way around, you may get one with the older, I think Phoenix controller and it would actually say here that it's the Phoenix controller. So I don't know why Samsung have done this. It's a little bit of a shame because they haven't told anyone they're doing it. They've just done it and people spotted it. And there are other drives like the Crucial P2, for example, I believe they had a TLC uh, main storage and now they have a QLC storage and these are all things to consider uh, when buying these drives and the less you pay the lower the quality or the lower the quality of the NAND flash or the lower the quality of the controller and the more you spend the better the controller and things like that so compared to the 970 Pro the 970 Pro has I believe MLC and MLC cache so that's a, a two bit um, two bit cache I believe something it's called something like that and that is essentially one of the best drives you can still buy because it has a much better longevity um, I think it's 1200 TBW for the one terabyte version and it only goes up to one terabyte and the Evo plus the two terabyte version has I believe a TBW also of two uh, 1200 and this drive has a TBW ter terabytes written of 600 so you can see the difference there in the quality of the of the the cache and the, and the NAND storage. So anyway, that's just a lot of background information that you probably don't need to know. So let's, or maybe you are, you are interested in knowing. So let's open this up with the trusty knife. Let's break the seal and take the drive out of the box. You may already have seen, I did another video on the 980 Pro two terabyte version and installing that inside uh, my Dell XPS 9305 from 2021 and the difference for this laptop why I'm using a Gen 3 X4 drive is because the laptop does not support Gen 4 so it's pointless wasting extra money uh, on that type of drive it's better to get a drive uh, which can be used at more or less you know maximum performance the Pro is better obviously but the Evo Plus is still a very good drive and you can still buy a Gen 4 drive by the way there's no harm in doing that so let's have a quick look at the drive. I'm trying not to zoom in too much because I'm using a different lens. You may not see all of the details. I will come a little bit closer or maybe I'll zoom in instead. Oh, can we, do we lose the focus there? Does that make, there we go. 
So obviously it's a very small drive, nothing special, typical NVMe drive. So we're not gonna look too much around that. Let me put that back in the packaging. And for anybody who is upgrading a Dell Precision laptop like this one, whether it's the 5510, 20, 30, 40, the XPS range, they all require a Torx T5 screwdriver. I think there's a label on here somewhere. I'm not sure if you can read that, but that is a Torx T5 screwdriver. So it has a very interesting head. And what we need to do is open up all of the screws and there are 10 of those screws, as you can see, laid out along the laptop. So I'm not gonna bore you with this, I'm gonna open it up and we'll continue recording. Back in a moment. Okay, so I've removed all the screws. I forgot to mention that there are also two Phillips screws under this panel here. You can see that I've already taken them out, the holes are there. And these are the screws that will come out of there. They're slightly larger than the ones that are on the edges here for the T5. So let's just remove the panel. And you will see now inside, oh, by the way, there is a thermal pad here, which might be stuck onto your drive, just letting you know that. So you can see there's one for the chipset and there's also one here for the drive. The green one here is for the drive. So that is the thermal pad. Okay, so you may have seen my memory upgrade video. There is 64 gigs of RAM in here, 2666 megahertz. And I also have a SanDisk Ultra 2 terabyte secondary storage. And I believe the bracket was already installed, but I had to buy this cable to attach that. So if you want to know more details about that, uh, let me know and I will talk about that as well. So this is the original drive. Let me just take out the single Phillips screw that holds that in. And let's get a look at this drive. I'm not sure if you can read the text on it, but I'll tell you that it is actually a Toshiba drive. And like I said, I don't really remember what the specs are, but I'm going to swap this out now. It's so obviously a very straightforward process. We just put in the Evo Plus. Slide it in. And just in case you're interested, this is using an M key drive. This laptop does not support B plus M key NVMe drives. And M.2 M key drives are the more common standard for most laptops today, but there are still some that do have the B and the M key. So if you have any questions regarding that or what, lap, what your laptop would support, do feel free to ask me and I can try and help you with that. And put the screw back in. Right, that's it, that's the upgrade done. How easy was that? So now let me put the cover back on, put the screws back on, and I'm gonna install the operating system again or restore my image. And then we will do some speed tests to see how this drive performs back in a moment. Okay, I'm back and the image has been restored to my new drive, the Samsung Evo 970 plus 1TB and you can just about see that I believe, oh, I'm not sure if you can read it, but there we go, SSD 970 over, sorry about the screen flick, I'm not sure why it's happening, maybe it's to do with the lighting or maybe it's the refresh rate of the screen, I don't really know. So I've got a couple of things open here. The first thing is I want to show you in disk management that there is some unallocated space. I'll deal with that later. So because I re-imaged from my 256 gig drive, it's still got the primary uh, partition there. So let's just close that. Let's close device manager. And now I'm going to run two benchmarks. So I've got ATTO and Crystal Disk Mark. But what I'm going to do to make for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do obviously because these are just synthetic and they don't really represent your you know, daily usage. I'm just gonna go straight to like the maximum single test so that we can verify what is the read and write speed I'm getting on the Precision 5540. It might vary based on your laptop and whether it supports Gen 3 X4, Gen 3 X2, things like that. But let me just zoom in a little bit there so we can see it clearly. At least I hope you can read it. Okay, so uh, there we go, you should be able to see that. So I'm going to start the test and let's see what sort of results we get. So we're getting about 3.2 gigs write and 3.4 gig, gigs read, which is not bad. And obviously this test will vary. If you do, this, if you do the full test, you'll get uh, the smaller files first and it will be obviously a little bit slower well, a lot slower for the much smaller files, but that's because of the relative size and the time required to access those files. 
So that's that one. And now let's also do crystal disc mark. Maybe I'll start with the first one. Oh, sorry, I think I lost the screen there. But there we go. Let's see what we get. 3,500 megabytes read. And 3,300 megabytes right. So I'm doing these tests, like I said, for the purpose of um, just showing you what is the maximum capability of the drive. And if I, what I will do while I just finish the video, I'm going to run a full test on this side. So let's just click start there. So while it does a test, I'm just going to zoom in. And I just want to discuss a few things about these drives. Now, what you have to remember, and you can see straight away there that we're getting much lower speeds, but it will gradually increase. So one thing you need to remember when buying a drive for your laptop. Now, what I said was this drive here, the 970 Evo Plus, it says here read speed up to three, oh, sorry. Let me zoom out while I do this and we can look at that result later. Get rid of the focus. Apologies for all of this. But anyway, it says 3,500 megabytes per second read. You'll see some drives that have a 2,000 megabytes per second read. And the reason is because depending on how the drive is made, depending on the controller, depending on the level of NAND and the cache and things like that, the speed will vary. Now, these speeds you're seeing now, the 3,000 megabytes, that is essentially what is known as the SLC cache. That is where the, the fastest part of the drive. So there's a cache area. I'm not sure what the size is on this drive, but there's a cache area that will essentially write at this speed. Once, if you're doing a, a big file, if you're transferring a large file, you'll actually see that um, the results will, will vary massively. So what will happen is, if you're writing to the whole drive, for example, if you're writing an entire one terabyte, after say approximately 100 gigs, assuming that this drive has an SLC cache of 100 gigs, the write speed will drop. Now, what, I've, what I have seen from some reviews that on this particular drive, it used to be about 1.2 gigabytes or 1.4 gigabytes, I can't remember properly now, but now with the new controller and maybe even the new uh, NAND flash, it's actually writing at about 800 megabytes per second, which is still not bad. Uh, so if you're doing a large file transfer, you know, a, a thousand megabytes or 800 megabytes is still acceptable, but it is something to be aware of, especially if you need something done instantly. Now, there's very few drives that can actually write at 3000 megabytes per second. Like I said, the 970 Pro is capable of sustained, uh, very high sustained write speeds because it has, because it's an MLC drive. So SLC is a, the, is a one bit layer. Uh, MLC is a two bit layer. TLC is a triple layer and QLC is a quad layer. So the QLC is the slowest and the cheapest version. That's why you might see drives like the Samsung Qvo or the Sabre and Rocket Q or the Crucial P2, I think also has SLC cache now. And there's a lot of drives that are like that. Now, if you buy a TLC drive, even if it has an older controller, it's possible that some of these results here may not be as impressive. But the bottom line is, it really depends what you're going to use the drive for. So if you are looking for a maximum amount of storage available, then, you know, think about going for a cheaper, bigger drive because you can get two terabyte drives in the region of like um, 180 pounds, 200 pounds and things like that. But then if you compare it to a similar 970 Pro, you're going to pay 200 pounds for a one terabyte drive or maybe even more than that. So it really does depend what you want to use it for. And then when it comes to the PS5, then we have to consider the read speed minimum of 5,000 megabytes and that it should be uh, NVMe PCIe 4.4x4 drive, 4.0 4x4, and that will require 3,500 megabytes per second read. Okay, so we've done that one. Let's move on to the next one. Um, I'll do these one by one because we already did the first one. So, I mean, that's really it for this video. I hope that helps you understand how you can upgrade a laptop drive if you're using an NVMe drive, that is. Uh, especially one with the M key. So this is specifically for an M key drive. And it's possible that you may have a laptop that does support um, both B plus M key and it can take a B plus M and an M key drive. That is possible as well. You will need to check the manufacturer documentation for that. But nevertheless, this drive does obviously seem to be looking good in the synthetic benchmarks. And anyway, we already know that the 970 Evo Plus has a great reputation for longevity and also for daily performance. Um, so it really is still a good drive uh, in this day and if you get it on offer, like I paid around 
like I said, it was about a hundred pounds with shipping from Germany, but shipping to the UAE was cheaper. It actually cost me about um, 87 pounds. So that's a great price for this drive. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions or concerns about trying to upgrade your laptop, feel free to give me the model number and I, and I will try and find out for you what is the maximum capability of your laptop. And I'll try and help as much as I can. So appreciate if you would like, if you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.